11.4b structural formulas, let's move on. Uh, let's again review how to draw function, uh, draw organic compounds, all right? Remember, the main function group is always drawn first. So step one, you have to draw and number the correct number of carbons for the main functional group first, always, based on its prefix. And using its prefix, you can use table P to find the number of carbons that you have to draw and number. In step two, you have to use the number and group name or group ending of the main functional group from the name uh, using tables Q and R to place it on the correct numbered carbon. Remember that no number always means that the function group on, goes on the number one position, except for ketones, where let's remember no number always equals the number two position in the middle. Step three, you have to use the number, prefix, and side chain group names to place side chains on the correct numbered carbons. Let's remember that um, the prefix di means two of the same side chain, tri means three of the same side chain, and let's remember the seven side chains are methyl, ethyl, propyl, fluoro, chloro, bromo, and iodo. Make sure you review those before um, you go through this lesson. In step four, once you put all the side chains and functional groups um, on the correct numbered carbons, you, in step four, you have to draw bonds around each C so that each has four bonds maximum. And finally, in step five, make sure you place H's in the empty spots. Okay, that's just a review of last time, but we're gonna use that for this lesson. So now let's go through some examples. So in example one, I have C3H7F, right? So in step one, I have to draw and number the correct number of carbons based on the prefix in the main function group. But here, I don't have a main function group name. In fact, I don't have a chemical name at all. Instead, I have a chemical formula. So all I can use is a chemical formula. If I look at the chemical formula, it tells me I have three Cs right here, right in the front. So what I have to do is I have to draw and number three Cs. So that's what I do in step one. One, two, three. All right. In step two, I have to use the number and the um, ending of the main functional group to uh, draw the correct function group on the correct numbered carbon, right? But I don't, again, I don't have a chemical name. I only have a chemical formula. So in fact, what that tells me is you can actually skip step two. You can write no idea because you have no idea what the actual um, number and the function group ending is. So you don't know what the functional group is and you don't know where it goes. So you have no idea. We'll come back to that in a minute because that'll, I'll show you why that makes sense. But in step three, now I have to use the number prefix and um, side chain ending to draw the correct side chain on the correct numbered carbon. But again, I have no idea what the side chain is. Uh, sorry, I have no uh, idea what the side chain name is. But I do realize that there's a side chain here. I have the side chain F, which if you remember, is the side chain uh, known as fluoro. Because fluoro equals F if you look it up on table R, right? So I have to draw the F somewhere. Since they don't tell me a number, I can just assume that I draw it at the end. Because let's remember, anytime you have no number for something, you always draw it on the first carbon. So I'm going to draw one F here, okay? Now, uh, in steps four through five, what I have to make sure I do is I have to um, make sure that I have four bonds maximum around each C for the diagram I drew in step three, right? So I have one bond for this first carbon here, carbon one, I have one bond on the left. So how many more do I need to get four bonds maximum? I have to draw three more. So I draw one at north, one at east, and one at south. The second carbon here, has one bond to the left. So how many more do I need to get four bonds maximum? Three. So I draw one at north, one at east, and one at south again to get four bonds maximum. This uh, final carbon here has only one bond on the left. How many more do I need to get four bonds maximum? I need three more because one plus three is four. All right, so I add one bond at north, one bond at east, and one bond at south to get four bonds maximum. Finally, in step five, now that I've gotten four bonds maximum around each C or four lines maximum around each C, I have to put an H in all the empty spots. So in step five, if I just put H's in all the empty spots, this is the structural formula I get for C3H7F, or if I redraw it, sorry, um, it winds up looking like this. Okay? And I can check that this works out because if I look at this formula and check it against the formula, I see that I definitely have three C's. One, two, three. I definitely have seven H's, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that checks out. And I have only one F. So that definitely matches up to this uh, chemical formula. This is the structural formula for this chemical formula. So there you go. In example two, I have four bromo octanes. So I can actually break this down because let's notice that the um, side chain in front is bromo, right? The 
Six poss seven possible side chains are methyl, ethyl, propyl, fluoro, chloro, bromo, and iodo. Since I have bromo in front, I know that this first part is the side chain. And let's remember, after the side chain always comes the main functional group. So I know this octane that comes after the four bromo is the main functional group. Okay? So now what I have to do in step one is I have to um, use the prefix of the main functional group to draw and number the correct number of carbons. The prefix here, if you see, is oct. And based on table P, we know oct equals eight carbons, right? So I draw and number eight carbons in the main functional group. So if I do that, this is what I get. One, two, three, four, sorry, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I draw and number eight carbons based on the prefix oct in the main functional group. Because oct based on table P means eight carbons, as you see here, okay? In step two, what I had to do is um, I had to use the number and the ending of the main functional group to draw and number the correct functional group and the correct numbered carbon. Since the ending is in here, if I look on table Q, I know that based on table Q, an A and E ending means an alkane, right? And alkanes, if you look on table Q, have single carbon-carbon bonds. So what that means is since there's no number and I have ane, putting those two back together, um, First of all, I know ane is alkane, and alkanes are single carbon-carbon bonds, right? And since there's no number, that means that no number means um, it's on carbon number one, okay? So if I combine the fact that I have a single carbon-carbon bond and that's on carbon number one, what I have to do in my diagram from step one is I have to draw a single carbon-carbon bond between one and two since it's an alkane. And let's remember for hydrocarbons, after you draw, um, after you draw, one bond is being single, double, or triple, all the rest are single. So based on the rule, since I determined that this was single, all the other carbon bonds are single as well, since it's an alkane anyway, right? And alkanes, as we know, have all single carbon-carbon bonds. So there we go, we've just completed step two. Now in step three, what we have to do is um, we have to use the, um, we have to use the number and the prefix and the, uh, ending of the side chain to draw the correct side ch number of side chains on the correct um, numbered carbons. So if you look at the number here, we see 4-bromo, right? So there's no prefix, so there's, if you have no prefix for a side chain, that means only one side chain, only one of the side chain, because it's not dire tri, so it's only one of the side chain. The uh, ending is bromo, so if we look on table R, we know that the uh, attached side chain would be BR, based on table R, if you look it up on your own. And four means the location, which means since the number's four, it's on carbon number four. So combining these three facts, I know that I have only one of the side chain BR, and it's specifically on carbon number four in my drawing from number one. So if I redraw that, like I did in number one, um, I have to remember that I have to draw it in the fourth car. I have to draw B one only one of BR in the fourth carbon, as I learned in this step step three for the side chain. So I draw BR here. Then in steps four to five, what I do really simply is I just put um, four bonds maximum on each C. So I'm going to do that. You can do that on your own, as you should already know this. And then um, I put H's in all the empty spots, as we learned in class today, right? So just put H's in all the empty spots. And once you do that, finally you have the structural formula for 4-bromo-octane. Octane is indicated by the fact that you have all single CC bonds and H's are surrounding it. The only weird thing is the side chain bromo, which is at the 4 position, so I drew a BR at the 4th carbon. So this is the structural formula for 4-bromo-octane. So in example 3, I have 1, 2, 3, trichloropentane. So, um, if you remember, I said that chloro is one of the uh, seven side chains, right? So, since chloro is one of the seven side chains, that tells me that this first part of the name, one, two, three, trichloro, is the side chain name. And since the group main functional group always comes after the side chain, that tells me that pentane is the main functional group, okay? <laughs> so, in step one, what I have to make sure I do is I have to make sure I use the prefix in the main functional group to determine, to draw and number the correct number of carbons. Here are the prefix in the main functional group is pent, and pent I know based on table P means that I have um, five carbons, because pent means five carbons, right? So I draw number five carbons like this. All right? In step two, what I had to do is now I had to use a number and a prefix of the main functional group to draw the correct functional group and the correct number of carbon. 
So in pentane, the ending is an, e, and an, e, as I know, is an alkane, right? And if you look on table Q for an alkane, you'll see that that is a single carbon-carbon bond. Where is that single carbon-carbon bond? Well, there's no number. Since there's no number, we can assume that the single carbon-carbon bond is on carbon number one. So that's what I do here. I draw a single carbon-carbon bond between carbon, starting at carbon one, going to carbon two. And let's remember for all hydrocarbons, when you once you determine what one bond is, whether it's single, double, or triple, all the rest must be single. Since I determined that this was single, all the rest must be single as well, since alkanes are all single bonds anyway. So now I've taken care of pe uh, pentane. In step three now, I have to take care of the uh, one, two, three trichloro. So first, um, I know that one, two, three tells me the positions of the side chains, which are on uh, number one, two, and three, just as the numbers suggest. Here, the prefix tri tells me that I have um, three of the same side chain, as you should have learned last time, right? Tri means three of the side same side chain, and um, di means two of the same side chain. So since I have tri, I have three of the same side chain. And the chloro, if you look it up on table uh, R, tells you that this is the side chain, if you look it up on your own. All right, so what I have to do now is I have to place, um, if I put these three pieces of information together, I know that I have three of the same side chain, Cl, on the first carbon, the second carbon, and the third carbon. So if I do that, what I get um, is something that looks like this. So I have this original, and I now put uh, three of the same side chain, Cl, on positions one, two, and three like this. Now in steps four to five, I have to draw four bonds maximum around each C and then draw H's in the empty spots. This C has two bonds here and here, so I have to draw two more bonds at left and bottom. This C has three bonds already, one, two, three, so I draw one more at the bottom here. This C already has three bonds, one, two, three, so I draw one more at the bottom. This C has two bonds, so I draw two more, one at top, one on bottom. This C has only one bond, so, you, so I draw three more. One at top, one at right, one at bottom. And finally, in step five, I draw H's in all the empty spots. So this is what I get. So once, sorry, once I do that, this is the final structural formula I get for one, two, three trichloropentane, okay? In example four, I have two, three dimethyl, one hexanol. So if you notice dimethyl, or sorry, the methyl part here is the side chain. So I know that two, three dimethyl is the side chain part of the name. All right, what comes after that is one hexanol. Since one hexanol comes after the side chain, I know that's, that, that's the main functional group, okay? So now in step one, I have to use the prefix in the main functional group, which is the prefix hex here, to draw a number the correct number of carbons. If you look on table P, you'll see that hex means six carbons, so I have to draw a number six carbons. So when I do that, this is what I get. In step two now, what I have to do is I have to use the number and the ending of the main functional group to draw the correct functional group on the correct numbered carbon. So the number one tells me that um, the functional group is on carbon number one. And anole, if you look it up on table R, matches up to an alcohol. And alcohols ha are drawn like this for the function of OH like this. All right, so if you put these two pieces of information together, what that tells me for the main function group is that the OH function group for anole is on carbon number one. So what I have to do in step one is I have to draw OH here. All right, in step three now, I have to now focus on the side chain now that I've taken care of the main function group. So here, um, the two and... The number two and three here tells me that the side chains, whatever I have, are on carbons numbers two and three. So it must be on the second and third carbon. Um, the prefix di, as you know, tells me I have two of the same side chain. And methyl, as you should remember from class, is um, CH3 which is drawn like this, as we've already seen in class several times. So when I put these three pieces of information together, what that tells me is I have to draw two of the same side chain, which is two of the, the same CH3s on the second and third carbons. So when I put those two pieces of information together, I have to draw two of the same side chain, which is two of the CH3s on carbons two and three. Once I do that, I get this, okay? And step four now, what I have to do is I have to draw um, four bonds or four lines maximum around each C. All right, so let me just redraw what I did, uh, what I just did from step three. So if I redraw that, I get four bonds max, 
sorry. Um, if I redraw that, this is what I get, right? And I have to draw four bonds maximum around each C. So this C has only one bond here, so I draw three more bonds here, here, and here. This C now has one bond here and one bond here, so I draw two more at the bottom and the right. This C now has one bond here, one bond here, so I draw two more at the bottom and the right. This C only has one bond, so I draw three more bonds at bottom, top, and right. This C has only one bond here, so I draw three bonds at bottom, top, and right. And this C has one bond here only, so I draw three bonds at bottom, top, and right. Finally, I put H's in all the empty spots in step five. And finally, now I have my structural formula for 2,3-dimethyl, 1-hexanol. All right, that's it. This is how you draw it. So in example five, you have 2,3,3-trimethyl pentane, right? So if you notice, methyl is a side chain, as you should know. So therefore, that tells us that the 2,3,3-trimethyl part is a side chain. And since pentane comes after that, that tells us that pentane is the main functional group. Now, in step one, what we have to do is we have to use a prefix in the main functional group to tell us the number of carbons. Since a prefix for the main functional group is pent, based on table P, that tells us we have to draw a number five carbons. So in step one, I draw a number five carbons like this, and this is what I get. All right, in step two, what I have to do is I have to use the number and prefix of the main function, sorry, the number and the ending of the main function group to, um, to put the correct function group on the correct numbered carbon. So, um... Here, since you have no number in the main functional group pentane, that just tells us that the functional group is on carbon number one. And the ending here is A and E. Since the ending here is A and E based on table Q, what that tells me is that um, I have an alkane. Okay? And if you look on table Q for the example of an alkane, you'll see that you have single carbon-carbon bonds. So that's what an alkane looks like. So if you combine these two pieces of information together, what that tells me is that I have a single carbon-carbon bond on carbon number one. So I draw a single carbon-carbon bond between one and two. Now, uh, let's remember that for hydrocarbons, once you determine if, a, if one bond is single, double, or triple, all the rest are single. So since this is an alkane and I determine that one bond is single, the rest must be single since alkanes have all single carbon-carbon bonds anyway. All right? In step three, what I need to do now is I have to use the number, prefix, and group of the side chain to put the correct number of side chains on the correct, num on the correct uh, number of carbons. So here, the 233, the numbers 233 three tell me that the side chains go on carbons uh, 2, 3, and 3 yet again. And then the tri here, the prefix tri, as you should know, tells me that I have three of the same side chain. And now, what is the side chain? If you look, the name here is methyl. So I have to put three of the same side chain, which is the methyl side chain. And if you remember from class today, methyl looks like this, CH3, and it's attached to the main flat chain. All right, so putting these three pieces of information together for the side chain, I have to put um, three of the same side chain, which is a CH3, three times on carbons two, three, and three yet again. So if I do that, what I'll get is I'll get a CH3 here for for uh, one of the methyls. Then I'll get, uh, sorry, I'm actually gonna redraw this, my bad. So if I actually redraw that, um, what I'll get is something that looks like this. And then on the second carbon, I'll draw CH3. So that satisfies the two. And two, C two more CH3s go on the three position twice. So I draw one CH3 here and another CH3 here. And that satisfies the 233 trimethyl part because I have three of the same side chain CH3 on the second carbon, the third carbon, and the third carbon yet again. And finally, in steps four through five, what I have to do is for this, um, for this organic compound here, I have to make sure there are four bonds maximum around each C and put H's in the empty spots. So this C only has one bond on the right, so I draw three more bonds at the top, bottom, and left. All right, and then... Here, um, this carbon already has three bonds, so I draw one more carb one more bond at the bottom for four bonds. This C in the middle already has four bonds. This C has two bonds, so I draw one more at the top, one more at the bottom for four bonds. And this C at the end only has one bond, so I draw three more bonds at the top, bottom, and right. Then what I have to do is now finally put H's in all the empty spots. All right? This looks a little messy, so I'm actually going to clean it up at the bottom. But this is the structure you should get. If you clean it up... It looks something, uh, just give me a minute to finish this, sorry. Um, what it winds up looking like is, sorry, this takes a little while. Um,
Once you draw H's in the empty spots, this is what you get for 233 trimethyl pentane. This is the structural formula for 233 trimethyl pentane. Okay? So in example six, we have methyl ethyl ether. So if you notice, methyl and ethyl are side chains. So the methyl ethyl part of the methyl ethyl ether is the side chain part of the name. Since ether comes after methyl ethyl, then ether would be the main functional group part of the name, okay? So that's how you break down this name here. Methyl ethyl is a side chain, ether is a main functional group. In step one, if you notice, there is no prefix in the main group. So what you have to do is you don't draw carbon, skip the step. All right, since you don't have any prefixes in front of ether, no carbons to draw, since there's no prefix in the main function group to begin with. Step two, um, notice there's no number, right? So the, there's no number here. So no number normally would mean on carbon one. However, we have no carbon, so this doesn't even apply. So you can also skip the no number part, because this doesn't even tell us anything. No number... No, no, we don't even know what it is because we didn't draw any carbons yet. All right, however, the ether ending in the main functional group, if you look on table R, does tell us that we have an O in the middle uh, bonded to other substances based on table R. So that's how you draw the ether ending part. Okay, since it's an ether, you draw O in the middle bonded to two different things. Um, in step three now, what we can do is we have to look at the side chains. The side chains, if you see in front here, are methyl as well as ethyl, right? So methyl, as we know, is drawn like this, CH3, attached to something else, and ethyl is drawn like this, uh, CH2, CH3, attached to something else, okay? So there you go. And let's remember that if you look on table R, what they show you is that the um, side chain that's named first is on the left, and the side chain that's named Second is on the right. That's how you draw the side chains on table R for an ether. So in steps four through five, or sorry, what I need to do is, since I have an ether, I have to do uh, O in the middle with the methyl being on the left side since it comes first, so it's on the left. And since the ethyl here is second in the name, then I have to draw the ethyl on the right. First side chain methyl goes on the left, second side chain ethyl goes on the right. So if I do that, I notice that I actually have four bonds maximum around each C, and everything is replaced with H's. So this is the correct formula for methyl ethyl ether. I put an ether in the middle. The methyl is, is named first, so it goes on the left here. And the ethyl is named second, so it goes on the right here. So this is methyl ethyl ether structural formula, okay? In example seven, we have dimethyl ether, right? So if you look, methyl is a side chain. So obviously dimethyl would be the side chain part of the name. Ether comes after the side chain, so ether is the main functional group part of the name. All right? Now in step one, we had to use a prefix in the main functional group to uh, draw a number, the correct number of carbons. But there's no prefix in front of ether here. So guess what? Step one, don't draw any carbons. It's a waste of time. You don't even know what the prefix is in the main functional group, so skip that. In step two now, we had to use the number and the... Um, ending of the main functional group to uh, put the correct functional group on the correct carbon. But notice there's no number. Generally, we would think no number is on carbon one, right? However, the problem here is we have no carbons. So you don't need to draw anything yet because we have no carbons to begin with. However, this ether part here, if you look on table R, tells us that it's drawn like this, right? Because ether's functional groups are drawn like this on table R. So, so far we have this for the ether part. Now in step three, we have to take care of the side chain part now that we've taken care of the main functional group. We have to now do the side chain part. So the prefix di tells us that we have two of the same side chain, right? And what is the sa same side chain? Well, if we look, we have, the, we have uh, methyl in here for the group. And methyl, as we know, as you should have known from today's lesson, is CH3. So putting these two pieces of information together, that tells us that we have two of the same side chain, and those two same side chains that go on the ether are the CH3s. So if you put that together, like this, what you wind up getting is this structure for dimethyl ether. That's because you had ether to begin with, and since you have di methyl, which means two of the same side chain and methyl being CH3, you have to put two of the same side chain CH3 on both sides of the O. So this represents dimethyl ether. All right, so this is a structural formula. Skips, skip steps four through five because we already have H's in all the empty spots and we have four bonds maximum around each C. That's it.
you're done. This is dimethyl ether. You have an ether in the middle and you have dimethyl because you have two of the same side chain methyl on the left and right sides. This is the structural formula for dimethyl ether, okay? Now in example eight, what I have is propyl butanoate. So what I need to do here is I have to break down the name into the side chain, the main functional group, okay? So let's note that propyl is one of the seven possible side chains you have. So that's the side chain part of the name. Since butanoate comes after propyl, that means that butanoate is the um, main functional group part of the name, okay? So in step one, what you have to do is you have to use the prefix but in the main functional group to, num name an, uh, to draw a number of the correct number of carbons. But based on table P, as we know, equals four carbons, right? So we have to draw a number four carbons like this. One, two, three, four, okay? And then um, what you need to do next is in step two, you have to use in the main functional group name, the prefix and, uh, sorry, the number and the ending to place the correct functional group and the correct numbered carbon. Since there's no number in front of butanoate, that means that we can assume it's on carbon number one as per our rules, right? And a noate, based on the ending, if we look on table R, we'll see, has, um, looks something like this. C double bond to O, and then C singly bond to another O. So if you put these two pieces of information together, what that tells you is that this C double bond to OO, or this um, ester functional group from table R, will go on carbon number one. So if I redraw that much more cleanly using this ester functional group on carbon number one based on these two pieces of information put together, what I get is um, something that looks like this. Okay? Um, yeah. So this is what I got. Sorry, actually, I'm going to redraw it. My bad. Um, but if you redraw it, what you'll get is uh, this, where you have a double bonded to O, singly bonded to another O, and a bond comes off of the O. And then on the other side of the C, you have a single bond. So now I have the ester functional group. All right? Now in step three, what I need to do is I have to use a number... Uh, the number, the prefix, and the name of the side chain, which is for propyl, to place the correct side chain on the correct carbon. So, um, no number for this side chain propyl here means we can assume it's on the first carbon because there's no number as per our rules, right? There's no prefix, so that means that there's only one of the side chain, all right? Finally, uh, propyl, as we know, as we sh you should know by now, is a three-carbon side chain that looks something like this. It's like it looks like propane, except you subtract or take off one H. All right, so this is what it should look like. So putting these three pieces of information together, you have to have only one of the side chain, which looks like this: CH two CH two CH three on the first carbon. So what I do now in my diagram from step two is I draw this uh, three carbon side chain coming off the first carbon, okay? So if I do that, this is what I get. This is my side chain attached to the ester, okay? Now in steps four through five, it's very simple. Um, I'm actually gonna show this right here. In steps four through five, you have to put four bonds maximum around each C and draw uh, H's in the empty spots. So this C already has four bonds around it. This C uh, has only one bond, so I draw three more like this. This C has one bond, so I draw three more like this. And this C at the end has one bond, so I draw three more bonds around it to make four bonds maximum. Then I put H's in the empty spots. And finally, voila, I have my structural formula for propyl butanoate. This is the propyl part right here, the CH2, CH2, CH3. And the butanoate is the four carbon ester function group at the end here. Okay? So that's my answer, propyl butanoate. Finally, example nine, I have C4H8Br2. So in step one, notice I have uh, no prefix or no main function group here. So all I can rely on is this to draw the correct number of carbons. Since it says C4, I draw a number four carbons. Okay, since I have no other source of information to find the number of carbons. In step two, um, I need to focus on the um, number and the ending of the main function group, but I have none of those. So guess what? Skip this step because I have no clue what the main function group is. They, they don't list anything, so I can skip this step since I have no idea. In step three, um, I still don't have a side chain. However, I do know that BR is a side chain. 
I have ch- I BR2. Since I have BR2, that tells me that I have to attach two BRs somewhere, right? Because BR is a side chain. Where do I attach it? Since there's no number, that means I can assume, as per our rules, it goes on carbon number one, okay? So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to um, redraw this diagram from step one here and draw two BRs on carbon number one. It says BR2, so I have to draw two BRs somewhere. Since there's no number, I draw it on the first carbon right here. All right? In steps four through five, which I'm actually going to show you right now really quickly, um, I just have to draw four bonds maximum on each C and then draw H's in the empty spots. So this C has two bonds, each one to BR. Each one to one of two BRs. So I have two bonds to two BRs. So I have to draw two more bonds to make four bonds maximum. So if I do that, I get this. This C only has one bond to the left, so I have to draw three more to make four bonds maximum. This C bond here only has one bond to the left, so I have to draw three more to make four bonds. And this C at the end only has one bond, so I have to draw three more to make four bonds. Now what I have to do, now that I've drawn four bonds maximum on each C, is put H's in the empty spots. And if I do that, I finally get the structural formula for C4. H8, BR2, because I have four Cs, eight Hs, and two BRs right here, okay? Finally, please complete uh, these questions along with uh, checkpoint questions one through three, which have popped up throughout this video. For one through nine, make sure you draw structural formulas for all these organic compounds, all right? Thank you very much. See you in the next class. Bye-bye.